But as we look at our process for the strategic income opportunity strategy, uh, we have four major risks that we look at, interest rate risk, credit risk, currency risk, and liquidity risk. Uh, let's look at interest rates first. I think a lower duration profile, somewhere between, uh, you know, probably, you know, one and a half in uh, three years probably makes sense right now with some of the uncertainty of, you know, what's going on with central banks. And then as we get more information and uh, some of the targets are hit, you know, a 325 to 340 10 year in the U.S., if that gets hit, it wouldn't surprise us to take that duration up a half a year to a year. Uh, when we look at currencies, uh, we have the view that over time the dollar uh, will change from this uptrend or short-term uh, flight to quality trend over the last five months uh, to, we think, exhibit a downward trend probably for the next uh, you know, five to seven years. Usually currencies, when they, tr they change, uh, will usually trend for that period of time. So we have a, a negative view on the dollar. And as such, would not be surprising to have outright currency positions long or some of our foreign bonds more unhedged. So our unhedged ratio would, would go higher. Uh, when we look at credit markets, we do feel that the leveraged loan space and emerging markets probably offer opportunities for us. Uh, the leveraged loan space, because we do have optionality on higher rates, and uh, we, we are in the upper part of the capital structure, so a downgrade potential is not there. And we're getting competitive yields there, so it makes sense. Uh, and I think on the uh, emerging markets, again, selected emerging markets, whether that be uh, adding to you know, our Indonesia, maybe looking at the Philippines, maybe looking at, you know, Malaysia or Thailand, or potentially looking at uh, adding, you know, Colombia, or maybe a little bit more in the Brazil uh, markets. Uh, we think that that selectively could add some value because you're getting that yield, you're getting the currency kick, and potentially you're getting a better economic environment there. From a liquidity standpoint, the last, which is always my concern, uh, we do feel that you want to make sure you have cash bonds. Uh, the only derivatives we use are forwards, uh, options, and financial futures, so they're the most liquid, plain vanilla derivatives. And we want to make sure we know what we own and, again, avoid markets uh, that are illiquid. So our minimum deal size is $500 million. Uh, when we look at anything below investment grade, when we look at leveraged loans, usually it's between $1 to $2 billion. So we have ample liquidity in those. And then we have to understand with the counterparts that we use to access liquidity, whether it be the bank or investment banks, that our relationships better be strong. And we got to make sure we understand that uh, who's going to make markets in the, you know, the bonds that we own. And I think we have a good handle on that. So our liquidity profile is still very, very strong. And if we had to dispose of uh, you know, a decent amount of our portfolio, we could do that pretty quickly.